Welcome to Jets Talk. My name's Ryan and I'll be your pilot tonight. I am joined alongside my co-pilot. I have, which way is he? Chris, the entertainer, talking sports. Welcome, Chris. Hey, man, I appreciate you for having me back on the channel. Um, definitely got to do this more regularly uh, in the season. And um, yeah, man, always, always open to talking New York sports. Obviously, I talk, you know, pretty much all giants on my channel, but I always like to branch out. And um, I'm definitely pretty opinionated about your Jets, so... Uh, I'm excited to talk about your team. No, I, I actually, we'll talk about it, but I, I actually really like the direction of your football team. But uh, I'm excited to talk about you guys tonight and what's going on, everybody in the chat. Yeah, guys. If you guys don't know Chris, he talks Giants. Best Giants YouTuber around, hands down. His Appreciate channel that. is going to be linked right down in the description. First link right there. And then I will also link it. Hold on. I meant to do this before and I didn't. Uh, it's going to be a pinned comment in the chat as well. And here's what we're going to do. I'm going to be giving away a shirt at the end of this stream. So just before or right around 10 o'clock. We started a little bit late, so maybe I'll, I'll do it a little after 10 o'clock. But basically at the end of the stream, someone who is in this chat is going to win a shirt. All you have to do is subscribe to Chris and leave a comment saying you came from Jets Talk 24-7 on his most recent video. And then Chris is going to pick someone from that comment list. Are we doing this shirt. tonight? We're doing it tonight. Oh, okay. yeah. Okay. Okay. Sounds right. good. I'm looking forward to it. Not too shabby. I'm not too sure. What's your most recent video, Chris? My most recent video. Uh, I did a video yesterday, actually, about um, Daniel. the news about Daniel Jones not playing against your Jets. Um, in the first preseason game, as well um, as talking about the depth chart. The first unofficial depth chart came out for the Giants and a couple of surprises, but I don't read too much into that. Um, it, it, like Judge had a lot of the rookies at the back end of the depth chart, but I kind of took it as he, you know, he wants the rookies to prove themselves as they move up, you know, as they as they get their opportunity. Sure, yeah, absolutely. So I guess that's a good jumping off point here. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the Giants offseason and what, you know, what should Jet fans be kind of expecting? What are you thinking about the Giants offseason? Are you happy with any trades that happened? Any, uh, you know, free agent acquisitions, draft picks? Tell us all about it. Hey, man, it was the most active um, offseason they've had in a while. You know, as you know, you're in, you're in New York, in New Jersey. You you know, you follow both teams. Obviously, you're more of a Jet fan. I'm more of a Giant fan. But the last two years, Giants have been in full rebuild mode, right? I mean, they got a new quarterback. They started from scratch. They got rid of all the old contracts, and that's kind of what they were doing. They were building young assets. This year, they were aggressive. Um, there's no doubt about it. A lot of Giants fans, they're nervous, right? Because the last time we did that, 2017 offseason, it was a complete uh, – 2016, rather. It gave us one good year, and then it was a complete disaster after that. When we brought in Janoris Jenkins, Sax Harrison, mm -hmm. um, so on and so forth. This year, we bring in a Dory Jackson, um, who I thought was either the best or the second best available corner – and that was definitely our biggest weakness on the defense. We had Isaac Yadam on the other side. So that is a dramatic improvement opposite James Bradbury. And, of course, the signature name, Kenny Galladay. Um, we all know that the New York Giants needed a number one threat for Daniel Jones. And they went out there and they got that guy. He's already had hamstring injuries in camp. And you worry about that. He missed 11 games last year. Um, and Rudolph. Rudolph, was, I thought, was a good acquisition for the Giants as well for an offense, even though he's hurt right now. And we'll see if he's able to play at the start of the year. But... Um, you know, last year we struggled mightily in the red zone. We had the second worst red zone offense in football and you got to figure with the acquisition of Galladay and him, it's going to help. And of course the draft, you know, we traded down. I love the value that we got. I personally was a fan of taking Slater. I thought that we needed to continue to buff that offensive line, but I can't argue with the value we got for the trade. We got a future first from the bears. I look at the bears schedule. I'm going to be honest with you. I think it's going to be a top 10 pick. They play a brutal schedule. So in the end, I think we're going to get really good value in that trade. We end up with Kadarius Tony, who I like, but I don't think he's going to be a an immediate impact type player. Like he's going to be, he's going to have a role, but I don't think he's going to be a you know a huge role for this team in his rookie year. So as Giants fans, I think Slater would have had more of an impact going into the year, and we just got to hope that that offensive line produces. That's been the same story for this team the last ten years. Um, but I am confident if the line is close to average, and that's what I'm going to be looking at mainly in the preseason more than anything else, that the Giants are going to have a good offense this year. So that's a good good kind of uh, thought there. Like, what is the state of the Giants? I see a few comments in the chat. They're a little concerned about the offensive line. Is that something that you're you're really kind of keying in on this, this preseason? I'm terrified. 
I mean, I, I, I'd be lying. I, I'd be, I'd be lying. You know, you, you always like to go, listen, I'm not, I'm not Dave Gettleman. I'm not Joe Judge. They make the decisions, right? I, I view it as a collaborative effort. And their decision was, listen, we drafted three offensive linemen in 2020. We're going to let them grow and progress. That's what they decided to do with Shane Lemieux, Matt Parrott, and um, Andrew Thomas. Thomas got a lot better as the season wore along. And I think they will improve, but it's still a major question mark. We lost Kevin Zeitler, who was kind of the most proven offensive lineman. He was mediocre last year, but he was the most proven, and they did nothing to replace it. So as Giants fans, you have to hope with the added weapons on the outside, getting Barkley back, that helps the offensive line. It makes the offense less predictable, and just them playing together for another year um, mm-hmm. makes them have a step up. But I'd be lying to you. Um, you know, if I, if I said I was supremely confident in this offensive line right now, it's really the only spot of the team that I'm super concerned with. Yeah, most people say Daniel Jones, but my line of thinking is if the offensive line is average or close to average, with the weapons Jones has, I think he can get the job done. I'm not telling you he's going to go out there and throw 50 touchdowns, but if he has a good supporting cast, I think he could be a pretty good quarterback in the NFL. The defense, I have really no worries. Uh, like I said, I thought our biggest weakness last year was the corner position. We went out and got a Dory Jackson. I think we're pretty good there. I think we definitely have a top 10 defense in the NFL. It's the offensive line. I think that's what you worry about more so than anything if you're a Giants fan. Now, you said Kevin Zeitler, and I can't tell you how frustrated I was that the Jets didn't try to pluck this guy away from you. Like, or Once I once we saw him leaving, I was like, okay, Jets are, you know, right there. You don't have to move. You can stay in your same house. Jets have a need at guard, especially our right guard position right now. And he goes... To, of all places, Carolina, which is where Sam is now. <laughs> I'm like, oh, come on. I was like, why are you doing that to me? Because I thought he was a really good offensive lineman. But I saw his contract. I think his contract was too high for what I would have felt comfortable uh, with the Jets giving him. Um, I don't remember what it is off the top you of my head. You're talking, talking about Zeitler? you talking about Zeitler? Zeitler. He ended up yeah. with, I thought, the Ravens, I thought, Zeitler. Was it the Ravens? I think it, it was the Ravens. Ravens. Yeah, I think it was, it, was the Ravens. it was the Ravens. And I think he ended up getting... I want to say six or seven million dollars with the Giants. It was nine, and that's why we cut him because we needed the cap space. But I thought it was a good yeah. pickup for the Ravens. Like you said, maybe the money mm. a bit much, but I, I thought that was a smart pickup for the Ravens. I think he's going to do well there. Yeah, you know, anytime there's a an opportunity to snatch a player away from the Jets or the Giants for the Jets or the Giants, I think that's you always have an upper hand. Like you, you you've seen it over the years with you know just countless guys. They don't have to move. It's a nice and easy transition. You get the Leonard Williams trade, for example. It's someone I want to actually touch on. Is he someone we're going to see in preseason? Uh, and what are you thinking about him? He just signed a new deal this offseason. Is that what it was? Yeah, it was a big deal. Big like, deal. Yeah, I think it was like, like 20 million. It was three years, about yeah, a little over $20 million a year. Big deal. Wow. Damn. Yeah. How are you feeling about that? Listen, man, at the end of the day, Giants are trying to build a new culture. Leonard Williams came in and he produced. I mean, Mm -hmm. this guy, and by no means am I comparing him to Aaron Donald, and I know a lot of Jets fans wanted to get rid of Leonard Williams because he wasn't doing great things for you guys, and I know Mm -hmm. you guys thought you ripped us off with the trade. Leonard Williams produced in a big way last year. We're talking near all-pro levels. That's how good he was for the Giants last year. Had Mm 10.5 sacks, was a disruptor in both the run and pass game. Um, He earned his money, man. At the end of the day, that's the going rate. We needed him back. He fits the scheme very well. He's versatile. He could play both on the outside and the inside, what, we, what we're looking for in a scheme like we have. So I'm happy that he's back. Um, in terms of whether or not he's going to play, if he does, and, you know, if the first team defense plays, I think it'll be a very short portion of the game. Judges come out and already said, which I don't even necessarily agree with, by the way, because there's only three preseason games this year. But he's come out and said that um, basically the, they're going to treat this as if it was the fourth preseason game in a previous Mm -hmm. season, right? Which is basically a dress rehearsal uh, for the guys Mm -hmm. trying to make the team. And his reasoning behind that was with the new rules in the NFL, they have to actually cut off five players from the roster. So it has to go from Mm -hmm. 90 to 85 after the first preseason game, almost immediately thereafter. So he wants to get Mm -hmm. a look at those back end of the roster guys. So it's already been announced Daniel Jones is not going to play. Barkley's obviously not going to play. Galladay's not going to play. Tony may or may not play. And if he does, it's going to be in a limited role. Um, I think the first first, um, team offensive line will play because we're banged up with the second unit right now. So I think they'll get at least a quarter and a half. As far as the mm-hmm. defense goes, like I said, maybe maybe a, maybe a drive or two. But if I'm a Jet fan, I wouldn't expect to be going against the first unit very long. Yeah, no. And especially on the uh, Jet side of things, too. Ooh, sorry. I'm drinking one of these friggin' 
<laughs> seltzers right now. It's killing me. Um, on the Jets side of things, you're not going to see a whole lot of Zach Wilson. He's going to play two drives, which might be the equivalent of a, a quarter, maybe, if, if you have some good sustained drives. I'm looking forward to seeing some of our offensive line pieces. I don't believe Elijah Vera Tucker is going to play our new guard that we traded up for this year. Um, I'm looking forward to watching Michael Carter, the running back we took in the fourth round. I want to see Elijah Moore, but I don't think he's going to play. I, th- I believe he practiced today. He, he did something to his uh, quad yesterday. So it's it's going to be interesting to see whether we get anything from him or not, or if they just kind of rest him, give Mims and some of these other guys uh, a little bit more playing time. The defensive side of the ball, I'm looking forward to seeing some of these young corners play. I don't know what we're going to get and what I could really take away from it, I guess, because of how many players the Giants are not going to have playing. Like, how much should fans read into the first preseason game, especially this year and, like, what we're getting at? All right, here's what I'll say. From a Jets fan's perspective, I think a little bit more because you're getting Zach Wilson, right? You're excited to see your rookie quarterback. So even though you're probably not going to be going up against the first unit, you're excited to see Wilson go out there and throw the football. So I think Jet Mm -hmm. fans should be a little bit more excited about this game going in. And, by the way, I think your team – and. I, I think you're going to struggle this year, if I'm being honest. I, I, rookie mm-hmm. quarterback, you have new coach, but the way you're building your football team, I, I really like the direction of the New York Jets right now. And, and, and I have not said that in the past, but I really feel like they're going down the right path. I think Zach Wilson's going to be a damn good quarterback. And I remember watching film of him before the draft, and, the, and, and I say it all the time, the way he processes the field, it, it just seems natural to him. Like sometimes when I watch Daniel Jones, I feel like I'm watching – and I like Daniel Jones, and I think Daniel Jones could be good, but it, it doesn't come – for Wilson, it comes across much more naturally for him to scan the field. Jones, sometimes I feel like I'm watching a robot, like he forces himself. That's the one thing that stood out to me when I watched Zach Wilson on film. He reminds me a little bit of Drew Brees in that aspect. I'm not comparing him to Drew Brees, but Brees was very good with that as well. Um, but I'm a fan of Wilson. I think he made a damn good pick, and I really like the way you guys are building your offensive line. Um, mm-hmm. Elijah Vera Tucker was a guy I really liked. I was praying he would drop to the Giants when we traded down. Beckton was mm-hmm. a good lineman for you guys last year. So I think you guys are really setting Wilson up for success, unlike the way you did it with Sam Darnold. Um, mm-hmm. So if I was a Jets fan, I don't go into this year with super high expectations. You know, f- rookie quarterback, five, six wins, but you want to build, you want to grow. Um, but I definitely think long-term you guys are in a good spot, especially with the, the draft picks you got as well. Yeah, you're kind of in the spot where the Jets were last year with Sam. Like, this is the make-or-break year for Daniel Jones. He's got the weapons. The offensive line not quite being there is definitely concerning because that's kind of what happened with the Jets last year. Pieces started falling apart. I mean, granted, everyone was hurt for the Jets. No one wanted to play for Adam Gase, and it wound up being a complete <laughs> not not good thing. Absolutely horrible. Um, but you're at that tipping point where it's like, all right, shit or get off the pot. It's and I loved the trade down. I took my buddy is a diehard Giants fan. He absolutely loves the Giants. I told him as soon as they made that trade, I was like, dude, that's a good trade. They dropped back. They got a first next year. They're hedging their bets just in case. They they've loaded up the team for Daniel Jones. Like they went out, they spent the money in free agency. They've started doing you know everything they can for him, and they have even more assets for when he proves himself right, or. They have the assets to go up and get the guy they want if he proves to not be the guy this year. And I think that was a really smart move. Yeah, and they made another trade down, too. When they got an old Jalari at 50, they got a third-round pick mm-hmm. as well. But, yeah, I'm with you, man, in terms of the value. Like, I want, I told you again, I wanted Slater, but I can't mm-hmm. argue with the value that they got. And it's like you said, it's insurance for Daniel Jones. And if Jones works out, mm-hmm. well, then you're going to be able to get yourself – possibly a dominant edge rusher, another offensive Mm -hmm. lineman. If you're picking high enough with the Bears pick, maybe you could trade down. Somebody wants to come up and get a quarterback. So it leaves all your options open. And, yeah, I think as a Giants fan, when you grade this year's draft, that was the biggest takeaway. The future first round and third round pick that you got in this year's draft um, Mm -hmm. was huge for this football team. We'll see. You know, I'm, I'm just excited for the direction. I think the Donald comparison is spot on with Daniel Jones this year, even though I think Daniel Jones personally probably has more weapons than Darnold had his last year with mm-hmm. the definitely has more weapons than Darnold had his last year with the jets. So, and we'll see, you know, and I think the giants have a better defense as well than the jets had last year. Yes. Um, that, could, that could also help Daniel Jones. So I think Daniel Jones is in a better situation than Darnold was his last year, but he still has the same obstacles with the offensive line and it's a put up or shut up year. That's the way the NFL works. As much as I hate to say it, 
you know, it may not even be fair to Daniel Jones at the end of the year, right? So if the offensive line is complete trash, and that is the main reason why Jones doesn't progress, it doesn't matter. If you're the New York Giants and you don't have – it's like with Donald for you guys this past year, and you have the ability to draft the quarterback and reset the rookie cycle at the quarterback position rather than going into year four with an unknown, you have to do it. Um, it's a put up – it's just like it was for Donald with you guys last year. It's a put up or shut up year for Daniel Jones this year. I'm in complete agreement with you on that. Guys, I am talking with Chris the Entertainer, talking sports. His channel is linked in the description down below as well as in the pinned comment in the chat. If you guys want to win a shirt at the end of this stream, all you have to do is subscribe to the Entertainer Talking Sports and leave a comment on his most recent video saying you came here from Jets Talk 24-7 and Chris is going to pick a winner at the end of this show to get a shirt. So make sure you hang around for that. Uh, V-Man, thank you for the super chat. He drops in. He says, breaking news, Zach Wilson says no to pineapple on pizza. Put the man in Canton already. <laughs> now, what, now, what's your take on the pineapple on a pizza? I've only had it once. My uh, mm-hmm. my, my best friend's wife orders that all the time, and I was there one time. Like, I'll try it. I I could eat it. I would never mm-hmm. order it. Like, you you don't get pineapple on pizza. You get pepperoni. What meat? Maybe yes. meatball. I don't know. But you, mm-hmm. you don't get. You do not get pineapple on pizza. Absolutely not. No, it's one of those things where it's like, okay, it's it's there's a bunch of different pizzas that are out and you're like okay there's one with it you know i'm gonna have my pepperoni slice i'm gonna have my meatball slice i'm gonna have maybe a slice of that <laughs> maybe i'm not a big like veggies on the on the pizza kind of guy or like right. what it would be a fruit i guess but either either way not the worst but i would never order it um so yeah v man i uh, i would say zach wilson is going in the right direction there um Rusty Spooner says, Jets, please get six foot nine, four hundred pound athletic right tackle Daniel Falele next year out of Minnesota. That guy was a monster. I was What's hoping the, uh, he was going to come out. I'm curious, um, because I've heard conflicting reports about Wilson. And and, mm-hmm. and you're gonna get that. You're gonna get yeah. that from the media, and he's a rookie. I, I I'm cu- not just your take. Like you mm-hmm. obviously have a pulse of the Jets fans. Right now, how did Jet fans feel? about i guess the up and down opening training camp for zach wilson so i think there's a little bit of concern like i've definitely heard people in my dms they're like hey you know this is you know sam darnold all over again are we getting our hopes up and i just say hey look we haven't even seen live action yet don't worry about it we saw plenty of quarterbacks have issues in camp and come out and play phenomenally well hell i I thought josh (laughs) allen was a bust up until last year and then he now he's like a top five quarterback so like who am I to really judge Zach Wilson right off the bat? I will say at the green and white scrimmage, I was not very impressed. I wanted to see some of the long throws down the field. They didn't really do that. They focused more on the running game. The defense kind of shined a little bit. But Zach came out the other day and he was saying, look, this is where I'm supposed to be trying to see what I can do in the NFL. Should I try to force this ball? Can I force this ball? Is this something I'm able to do? And he gets the interception in practice. He goes, you know what? I can't do that in a real game. And the way he worded it for the media, I think probably put fans a little bit more at ease. Um, but the way the ball comes out of his hand is just so much different than Darnold, and he can come and throw at every different angle. Like, he can whip it sidearm. It almost like he tries to whip it sidearm just because he knows he can, and it's, like, a little frustrating <laughs> at times You know, he to used watch to do that like... all the time, and he still does it. Stafford. Oh, Sta- yeah. I, he used to he always have that. The, 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 yeah, and he had, always does the sidearm delivery. He was, he's yeah. famous for that. It's. I think he's going to be phenomenal out in LA this year. I think it's going to be. Oh my really god! I'm a, to watch. I am tempted. Stafford always disappoints me because he's the type of guy when I watch him, my jaw drops. I'm like, the talent is there, but I am tempted. You pair him with McVay, with that mm-hmm. Rams defense, I'm tempted to pick them to go to the Super Bowl this year. I, I think the Rams could be really good, but Stafford just seems to have that. And and he was with Detroit, so we'll see. He's finally got a much better yeah. situation. He's just always seemed to be that guy that just can't just can't make the playoffs. But I'm a big Rams guy this year. I think that I them and the Niners though. I'm not sleeping on the Niners either. Um, mm-hmm. I think the Niners could be really good as well because they had all the injuries last year. I think maybe some people are forgetting about them. But I do like the Rams and I like Stafford a lot this year. So speaking of the 49ers, do you think the Trey Lance experiment goes early, or do you think they roll with Garoppolo? I think I before last year's football season. I was saying Trey Lance is quarterback number two, hands down. 
and then they played him one game. <laughs> he, he did the they did the showcase game for him where he had I think his only interception of his collegiate career. He didn't play last and, year because of the virus, right, Lance? Correct. The, yeah, well, yeah. Not just him, but his school opted to only do the showcase game. Right, and right, then right. they did the, uh, I believe it was in October, I think they played one game and it was really awkward, not a really good uh, depiction of what he was going to be, but all the talent was there, the arm strength's there, he's a scary quarterback, but I'm okay with the Jets not rolling the dice with him because Zach Wilson had such a good you know, year last That's year. That's what I was going to ask you, mm-hmm. draft night. Was mm-hmm. Wilson your, I mean you knew that they were probably going to take Wilson, at that point it was kind of a formality. Yeah. Let's say two months leading up into the draft. Who was the quarterback that you – was Wilson your guy? Because obviously you knew you weren't getting Lawrence. Was Wilson your guy? Wilson was definitely – of the guys I was looking at, he was the one I would have taken. Um, yeah. I I was definitely for Fields for a bit, and then I started getting scared of Fields because a lot of people were like, oh, no, he's not processing things fast. And I'm like, man, you know, this smells a lot like the Deshaun Watson talk before his draft. And, like – I saw what he did in college, and it was really impressive. And it, especially the lead up to the the national title game, just the way he kind of put his team on his back was just really impressive. So Fields would have been cool, but based on all the talk and everything I saw beforehand, it was really it was it was Zach Wilson or, or like trade the pick. I actually before the draft, prior to the allegations, I wanted Deshaun Watson. I would have given up. Number two overall, I would have given up a first next year and a first the year after that. Understandable. Like, yeah. easily. Before the without... allegations, understandable. Yep, yep. Um, and I was I was 100% sure it was happening, and then all that came out, and I was like, well. <laughs> to circle back to your Trey Lance question, here's what I'm going to say about Lance. Mm-hmm. I'm not even saying he's, like, identical to him as a prospect. If mm-hmm. I was an NFL GM, and it was much like the way I felt with the Giants in 2018, mm-hmm. if I was going for a first-round quarterback prospect, I'm swinging for the fences. And mm-hmm. I feel like Josh Allen was that guy in 2018. He was the mm-hmm. boomer bust guy, and obviously it's worked out for the Bills, but a lot of times those guys bust. I feel that's what Trey Lance is. Like, if you mm-hmm. tell me in three or four years Trey Lance is going to be the best quarterback in this year's draft class, I wouldn't blink an eye because mm-hmm. I see the potential, and you're putting him in an offense with Shanahan, right? A mm-hmm. great offensive mind. This is the same guy who made Jimmy Garoppolo a near Super Bowl winning quarterback. So I think of the all the quarterbacks, and no disrespect to your Jets, no disrespect to the Jaguars, and no disrespect mm-hmm. to the Chicago Bears, Trey Lance by far got put in the best situation to succeed at the start of his career. You tack on the fact that I think it's going to be a Kansas City Chiefs situation, kind of like it was mm-hmm. for Pat Mahomes his rookie year. To answer your question from earlier, no. Unless Garoppolo gets hurt, I think this is Jimmy G's team to run because I think the 40, just for this year, because I think the 49ers are going to be a good team, and I think that's what the 49ers, they saw a guy they really liked. They said he's a little wet behind the ears, much like Mahomes kind of was coming out of college. Mm-hmm. Let him sit, let him learn under Garoppolo for a year, unless, of course, they're not doing well. But if they're doing well and everything goes according to plan, let Garoppolo play out the year, and then Trey Lance will come in year two. I like that. I like that a lot. I think that's the way you'd want to kind of groom a quarterback like that, like just by pure necessity. The Jets do not have a, like any sort of veteran. They have no one that they could possibly be bringing in uh, to start or to like hold the fort down. There's no incumbent quarterback. It's literally, you know, Mike White, James Morgan, guys who haven't taken a snap in the NFL behind Zach Wilson right now. So we're really riding Zach Wilson ride or die. He gets hurt, we're coasting. <laughs> we're using the running game. We're like, all right, let's load up on picks for next year. Like, I, forget it. We'll. we'll look at the defense see what we're doing there but man if, if zach wilson were to go down the jets are in a world of hurt from the quarterback perspective were you a little surprised you guys didn't because you had cap space are you a little surprised you didn't bring yeah. in a a more proven just even just as a mentor like a more proven yeah. quarterback yeah. yeah i definitely am i thought they would have brought in someone now i'm keeping my eye on Foles because it doesn't feel like he's gonna wind up going to the colts from from what i'm sort of watching right now and they're not going to keep Andy Dalton and him. So I right. think they might snatch up Foles when he is either cut or they might throw a late pick for him um, at some point. I don't know. I, it feels weird to me that you would roll into the season with only Zach Wilson as, like, the guy. Because <laughs> there's no – like, at least if you bring in Nick Foles, it's like, okay, this guy's won a Super Bowl before. At least you could, you could kind of get an accurate read on how the rest of your roster is as a first-time head coach – 
and you know first time offensive coordinator you know new defense you're installing if you lose the guy at quarterback now the rest of your team kind of gets deflated and then you start seeing the half effort that you got out of the adam gase regime so i don't think you'll see that uh i think the jets will try to avoid that from happening if something were to happen to zach uh, all right but my, my buddy big green jumps in he says what are your thoughts on the discipline of your coach entertainer all right, well, we were talking about kind of the New York media and how they handle the Jets. I think it's the same thing with the Giants. I think it's overblown, to be completely honest with you. And listen, Joe Judge does things that are, I guess, not normal for the NFL. He has, he has a unique style, right? A lot of teams aren't running laps. But the, I almost look at that as like, I don't know, a team-building thing. Like, it's almost like something that you laugh about if you're on the field. I don't feel like these younger players are taking offense to that. I think, And if you listen to the players, they're all about it. So as long as the players are buying in, and as long as the team is playing hard for Joe Judge, I'm not going to care about what the media thinks about them running laps, so on and so forth. Last year, I'll tell you what I saw from Joe Judge that I didn't see under Ben McAdoo, that I didn't see under Pat Shermer. This team fought for him every single game. They played to the last second of every game, regardless of the opponent. Cannot say the same thing about Ben McAdoo. The team completely quit on him. Cannot say the same thing about Pat Shermer. We had guys falling asleep in meetings. So... I, uh, I I respect what Joe Judge is building, but at the end of the day, it's a results-driven business, and it's you're going to see it with your coach, Rob uh, Robert Sala. If Judge has another losing season this year, which hopefully he doesn't, I personally think we're going to win nine games, but we'll see. If he has another losing season this year, he's on the hot seat. I don't care how much I like the guy. It, you tell me a coach, there's not many mm -hmm. that start their career with three losing seasons and get to see their job for a fourth year. So it's a results-driven business in a results-driven city, and Judge is going to have to start winning games as much as we might hype him up. Got to see some results. But overall, in terms of the way that the media criticizes him for the way that he handles his practices and everything else, Judge is going to do things his way. That's the persona he has. That's what he said when he took this job in his first mm. interview. You know, I don't know why people are so surprised that this guy has these strenuous practices. It's the first thing he said. He basically mm. said, we're going to run these like high school practices. And I think it was a culture shock for the Giants. And I think it was something that they needed. So he's delivered on what he said he was going to bring to the football team. I don't care what the media has to say. Now, I want to get your thoughts on in the event things go sideways with Daniel Jones. I, I think a lot of people feel Gettleman's gone. Do you feel that way? And does Gettleman being gone affect Joe Judge's future? Yes, to be honest with you. I'm not saying Judge would get fired, but it definitely – let's put it this way. It's in Judge's best interest. If I was Judge – I want Gettleman to stay on because if you fire Gettleman and you bring, and who knows what they would do. Maybe they hire somebody from within the organization, but if they bring in an outsider, he's got no ties to judge. And let's say the giants have a complete disaster of a season. And like you said, Daniel Jones is bad. We get rid of Gettleman. We win five or six games. First off, you're limiting your selections of potential GMs. If you're going to force Joe judge on said GM, because as much as we may like Joe Judge as New York Giants fans, you have to think about it from an outsider's perspective. An outsider coming in, if the Giants win five games this year, say, so I have to accept a head coach that's 39, 40 years old, that has 11 wins to his name over two seasons, that was a complete disaster after they spent like lunatics and free agency the year. So, yes, if Gettleman is fired, you know, and it's kind of what I say, and I, I actually don't hate Gettleman. I say it all the time. I try to be fair with Gettleman. Um, his first year was a disaster. 2018 was a disaster. Then they started the rebuild. I would have fired Gettleman after 2019, though, for the simple reason I would have wanted a clean slate. I would have wanted a head coach and a GM on the same timeline. And when you fire a GM and you keep the head coach, one, you're limiting your potential selections at the GM spot, and two, they're not on the same timeline. That's not his guy. That's not the head coach he selected. So while I think Judge will be back with the Giants no matter what year three, it's undeniable if Gettleman is fired it immediately puts Joe Judge on the hot seat in year three. Um, and I, I, I'm in complete agreement about your statement about Daniel Jones. Um, at the end of the day, as much as I may like some of the things that Gettleman has done, he's completely rebuffed this defense over two years. You go back two years ago, we were starting guys like Corey Ballantyne. Like, the defense was a disaster. Now we're one of the top eight, nine, ten defenses in football. And, a lot, and that has to do with him. He traded for Leonard Williams. That obviously helped the defense. He signs James Bradbury, Martinez. He's made he's made a he's done a really good job on that side of the football. But his promise when he took this job was he was going to fix the offensive line, and he drafted Daniel Jones. And at the end of the day, that is what a GM is based. That's what he's judged on. That's his legacy. The quarterback. The reason that New York Giants fans look back with fondness about Ernie Acorsi is because he was the guy that selected Eli Manning. Okay, 
And if Daniel Jones fails, Gettleman failed, and Gettleman will be replaced. Mutt Viles drops in with a super chat. He says, sup, guys. Ryan met Ali and Matt at the scrimmage but didn't see you. I know. I'm sorry, Mutt Viles. They told me that they saw you, and I, they were like, oh, we met multivitamins. I was like, oh, no way. That is awesome. I was running from work. I literally I had to run a long drive competition, the finals of our long drive competition, and it ended at 6 o'clock, <laughs> and I left work, and it's like an hour drive. I got to the stadium right at 7, and I sat down with Matt and Ali, and that was like – right at the start of the green and white scrimmage. Um, he says, anyway, why are people saying Trask and Kellen Mond will be better than Zach Wilson? It's because Zach Wilson plays for the New York Jets. That is why. I, we are we are just a punching bag. <laughs> and rightfully so. <laughs> Until we get it right, we are a punching bag. Yeah, I mean, that, that's the truth. I mean, I don't know how anybody could go in with a clear mind and think that those guys are better um, prospects than Zach Wilson. That's nonsense. It's, you're yeah, right. No, it's, 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 it's Looney Tunes. Um, and Lucas, you're what's... right. Technically, what I said wasn't right. Ernie, of course, he traded for Eli Manning. He didn't draft him. You're absolutely right. He, tra- he, he traded up. Technically, we drafted Phillip Rivers, <laughs> but it was an agreement when we, tra- when we drafted him that we were going to make the trade for Eli Manning. So you're right. He's still responsible for bringing in Eli Manning. And he's still responsible for building the vast majority of those Super Bowl teams. I had a moment like that with one with a, a commenter the other day. They said, "What? Actually, no. You know, it was Jets subreddit, or no, it was NFL subreddit, where they're talking about what was the worst trade your team made." And you know, all these things are like, you know, Texans are saying Hopkins, and like, like lots of pretty funny answers in the chat. And I go, "Oh, you know, Belichick to the Patriots," <laughs> because technically, even though he resigned and he didn't want to be the head coach of the New York Jets, the Jets got like a first and like more <laughs> for that like transaction to have is it more of a transaction i guess than like a trade per se but when you look up head coaching trades the jets have two of them herm edwards and bill belichick technically wow i didn't even know to be honest with you i didn't even know i I knew about belichick Mm -hmm. that was being named the jet head coach and then quickly rescinding it Mm -hmm. i knew about that i didn't know that they got draft compensation for it i did not i did not know that yeah yeah technically uh that's how that worked out i'm gonna Uh, just uh before you get to cruise on who's awesome yeah yeah I never get this. I see Matt A, and then I saw somebody agree with him. Legend Killer agrees with him. He says, I hate Let's the see. Giants more than the Patriots. And I <laughs> don't get that. I Because I, I have friends that are the same way. When the Giants sure. were in the Super Bowl against the Patriots, they were rooting for the Patriots. I don't get it. If I was a Giant fan, I am never rooting for the Philadelphia Eagles against the New York Jets. I'm never rooting for the Dallas Cowboys. And I don't <laughs> hate the Jets. I actually like the Jets. They're actually my second favorite team. I see no reason to hate the Jets. But... I could understand. I'm a Met fan, so I understand the mm-hmm. little brother, big brother thing. Because I'll be the first to say I don't like the Yankees, but I would never root for the Philadelphia Phillies against the New York Yankees. So I, mm-hmm. I don't get that. I don't get how a Jet fan could say they hate the Giants more than the New England Patriots. That makes no sense to me whatsoever. So the first Super Bowl against the Patriots, I was a senior in high school, <laughs> and I'm a big Jet fan, and I'm watching both championship games. I'm like. You've got to be kidding me. This is like the worst thing that could happen. And I don't, again, I don't hate the Giants. <laughs> I just like, I know if the Giants are in the Super Bowl, I live in New York. I am going to get hounded by all my friends that are Giant fans. That's like, oh, what we it won, is. we won. Yeah. And we're like the Patriots. You're not going to, you're not going to hear from them because there's no Patriot fans around. But I have to deal with Patriot fans on the internet. I got to deal with like, you know, them being in my division. I hate the Patriots. I hate Tom Brady. I hate the whole Spygate thing and all this other, I could rant about this. I had a Chad Pennington jersey, number 10 Chad Pennington jersey. For that Super Bowl and for the Super Bowl when I was a, I guess would be a senior in college at that point too, I put blue painter's tape over the Peyton or over the uh, Chad Pennington and I wrote Manning on the back of my Jet jersey. I was like, I, I'm rooting for New York. Like, fuck Tom Brady, dude. I am so done with this guy. And it could not, I could not have been happier. It was bittersweet, but it was like, I could not have been happier. Yeah. For sure, for sure. <laughs> now, it did make me feel pretty good. I'm not going to lie. I was pretty happy when the Eagles beat the Patriots. One, because I hate the Patriots. And but the, two, and it's a then it, the it's, it's, it, it is. It's a little bit of a step. It's like, oh, well, you know, at least the AFC or the NFC East <laughs> beat, uh, you know, the Patriots in the Super Bowl. And it was like, I like saying Big Dick Nick. I think that's one of the funniest nicknames I've, <laughs> I've come yeah, around that, to. That, like. was, that, was the, that was the worst feeling I've ever had outside of seeing the Giants lose in the Super Bowl when the Eagles finally won one because we always had yeah. that 
that dick. Well, you've never won a Super Bowl. Now we can't say it anymore. So yeah, I could I could see a Jet fan being happy about that. That would be the equivalent, and it sucks because it's going to be the same thing with my friend. He's a Giant fan, and I know when the Bills inevitably win a Super Bowl. Right now, I could say, "Hey, Bills don't have Super Bowl. Like, where's your ring? <laughs> like, whatever." And he's. We went to school in upstate New York, so he has a lot of Buffalo Bills fans. So it's kind of like his second favorite team. So I'm gonna have to hear it from him. <laughs> if they <laughs> win, you don't. You don't know but if they're I, gonna win. It no, but it's it's a they weird should. feeling. They should. Josh for me Allen too. looks really good. But he looks really good. That team's really good. I really wanted Brandon Dable as my head coach prior to the whole Salah thing. Um, and I, I'll say this: it, the Bills to me, because of how dominant the Patriots have been and how bad the Bills have been over the long haul, and how they've been kind of mirror images with the Jets and Bills, except the Jets kind of went sideways trying to build around Darnold. Um, I actually don't hate the Bills. It's it's a very odd feeling as a division rival. Like, I, I, I hate their... I can't even say I hate their fans. Like, I think it's funny, like, Bills Mafia jumping through tables. Like, these guys have nothing to do but, like, jump through tables up there. I don't know. It's, it's it, kind of how I feel have... about Washington. I don't okay. hate Washington. I don't like them, but I don't hate them. Like, I don't sure. root for them. I hate the Eagles, and I hate the Cowboys. Now, what I will say is, <laughs> Washington is st- starting to get on my nerves a little bit. Because maybe it's because the team's starting to get better, so maybe my opinion <laughs> will change them in, in the near future. But I don't, I've never had a, a – I've never had, like, a pure hatred for Washington. So I, I could see that. I could definitely see you – obviously, if you're a Jet fan, you despise the Dolphins, and you despise mm-hmm. the Patriots. But yep, I could. it's kind of like us with Washington. I could see that. That makes me feel a little bit better. And, uh, you know, I was actually, we were drawing parallels, a lot of Jet fans, to uh, the idea that the Bills could move to Austin (laughs) and how there's one team in the uh, AFC or the the AFC East and the NFC East where you got one team in Dallas or one team in Austin. I was going to ask that because I heard about that rumor they would stay in the East still. That I would assume so. I I would think they wouldn't take them out unless they'd have to reshuffle all the divisions. And I I would, I'm going to tell you what, man. I think that's a horrible idea. And I, and I know that Buffalo is a small market, but they have one of the three or four most passionate fan bases in the NFL. Oh, yeah. I would hate to see – it's kind of like the Supersonics in the NBA when they moved. I would hate mm-hmm. to see that happen to the Buffalo Bills. I think that would be a terrible – I know it's money-driven, but mm-hmm. I think that would be a terrible idea if they moved the Buffalo Bills to Austin. I wanted in the worst way for Josh Allen to come out and say, I'm not signing an extension with the Bills unless we stay in Buffalo. And that fan base would have erupted. Like, like he would just drop his hammer on the table and be like, like, mess with me. I dare you. Like, what are they going to do? Franchise tag me two years? No, then I'll get a monster deal after that. Like, I would have loved to see that. I don't want to see Buffalo leave Buffalo. Yeah. I don't want to see them play closer to Buffalo because right now they get the whole, oh, well, we're the only New York team and the Jets and Giants are Jersey and all this other stuff. And then I just pull out the whole, well, the Jets and Giants play closer to New York City than the Bills play to Buffalo. <laughs> like, so it's what true. the hell? It's they play true, in Orchard though. Park. It is. <laughs> it's true. Cruzian, uh, Cruzin, 26, thank you for the super chat, says, we don't hate the Jets. Why hate your little special brother that needs to wear a helmet so that he won't hurt himself when he uses a fork? Oh, God. I had that sitting up here on this page right now for way too long before I actually read this. <laughs> I, oh, God. Cruzon's a great subscriber like of mine. Um, Tim A. Being here. <laughs> oh, God. I, I'll fantastic. say this about the Jets, though. You guys have had – I think the Jets get a little more hate than they deserve – you guys have had the unfortunate circumstance where you've been in the same division as Tom Brady and Bill Belichick. You guys have had good teams over the last 20 years. Uh, you went to two AFC title games with Ryan. You had the, mm-hmm. the, the team in 2000 where you went to the AFC title game with Vinny Testaverde. Um, and you had some competitive teams with Pennington. You just, The one thing that I always think about with the Jets that you guys have never had, you guys have never really had a true franchise quarterback. Like, name if you did, but it was yep. really short-lived. You've never yeah. had an Eli Manning. I'm not, mm-hmm. you know, we had a guy for 15 years that you knew was going to suit up every single Sunday. You guys have mm-hmm. never had that. And if you're a Jet fan, yep. obviously you're hoping that that's going to be Zach Wilson. Chad's the closest thing we've had to stability at the quarterback position, and he got hurt so many times. He actually had a pretty good arm up until the shoulder injuries, and then it just kind of fell apart, and it was like dink and dunk Chad. You know, 15 maybe a 20-yard pass. <laughs> like, anytime you had to go yeah. over 20 yards, it's like, oh, <laughs> start flopping throughout the air, and it just wouldn't be a wouldn't be a good pass. And it's just, 
it all fell apart. But he wound up winning the division with the uh, the Dolphins in 2008. Yep. And that felt good as a Jet fan. Like, you know, I, I will always have a soft spot for Chad. As much as I don't want the Dolphins to ever win anything, if the Jets had to not do something and another team had to win, watching your former quarterback get it would have been, you know, pretty good. And actually that year, the Jets had Favre. If Favre didn't hurt his shoulder, we were 8-3 and three that year until Favre got hurt. And then we would have had a, like a really good year. That was just before we got Sanchez. Was that was that the, the year that Brady got hurt? That was the year Brady got hurt. So that yep. was the Wildcat team for Miami. Correct. That was the team with Ronnie Brown. That was and, uh, Ronnie Brown and, <laughs> and uh, Ricky uh, Williams. Ricky Williams. Yeah, yeah. That was the Wildcat yep. team. I always liked Pennington when he was with the Jets. I always thought he, but like you said, he was kind of limited with the arm and the injury. But I always liked Pennington. He was a cerebral quarterback. He's definitely been your best quarterback since I've been watching football. Um, Testaverde had a great year in 2000, but overall, he's been your best quarterback. Rockaway Archie! Rockaway Archie, thank you for being a member of the channel, brother. Check out the new emojis. I got some new emojis that I threw out in there. You got you, you got a Joe Douglas flipping the bird. You got a, uh, a Zach Wilson head in there. There's a, I was uh, telling you though? before we went live, by the way, I saw somebody say it mm -hmm. earlier. Your setup is freaking awesome i freaking i got i love your setup it is incredible it's, it's awesome man i love it thank you i have a lot of fun doing this sort of stuff i like i need to do what you did and just go full time with the youtube stuff because i really have a lot of fun doing this and talking with everyone like look at it they see all the little middle finger joe douglas is now i i photoshopped joe douglas i'm like a wwe guy <laughs> flipping the bird oh god it's it's fantastic absolutely fantastic <laughs> thank you rockaway archie for joining the membership um yeah oh man so where were we i kind of got sidetracked with that <laughs> we, we were just going back and forth we were talking about the buffalo bill we were jumping all over the place, oh, all jumping over all over the place. place. yeah i like that that's 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 a good that's that's not a not a bad we were talking problem. about pennington a little bit yeah yeah so what if there's a player on your team that you're really looking forward to is it barkley or is it like one of the other players on your team that you're looking forward to watching this year? Because I feel like this is a huge year for Saquon. I friggin' love Saquon. I friggin' love Saquon. Um, he, he is, he's what a giant should be, in my opinion. Like, he's that leader. Mm. He's that guy that I, I, I don't think there's a giant. That we're definitely divided as a fan base in terms of whether or not we should have picked Saquon. And we're also definitely divided as a fan base of whether or not we should retain Saquon. Because a lot of fans mm -hmm. don't want to pay a, a running back. Um, that kind of money that it's going to require, even yeah, if he stays healthy this year. Or whatever. Yeah, there's definitely fans that are against that. And as Jeff fans, you should know that with Le'Veon Bell. That didn't work out very well. Um, and right. I understand it. I understand Giants fans being reluctant to not want to, and I know Cruzon's one mm -hmm. of them, to not want to mm -hmm. give Saquon Barkley that kind of money. But in terms of a football player and the way that he represents this organization, it's impossible not to want to root for the guy. Um, and last year he suffered that horrible injury. And I'm going to tell you what, all you have to do is look at the numbers for anybody that says that running backs don't matter and don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. Okay. I understand that you could definitely have a very strong backfield. If you have a really good offensive line, if you have weapons on the outside, it helps your running back. If you, if you know the motion offense, like the San Francisco 49ers, have, I get it. Daniel Jones's numbers with Saquon Barkley in 10 starts, 23 touchdowns and nine interceptions in 16 starts without him. 12 touchdowns and 13 picks. So in six less starts, he's got 11 more touchdowns. So I, it's he, he's a different quarterback when Barkley's in the lineup. It completely changes the whole complexion of this offense because you have to game plan for Saquon Barkley. You can't send the house every play because if they run a draw play to Barkley, he could take it 80 yards to the house. So you have to honor that. I am super excited to see Barkley back in this lineup. And if he's healthy... I think he could take this offense to the next level. I'm not saying they could be a great offense, but he can make what was a really bad offense last year into an average offense. I think Barkley is by far the guy I'm most excited to see back on the football field this year. Sugar Clay in the chat has discovered a uh, <laughs> a hidden message in my emojis. Uh, T, freeze bean, TS. <laughs> it looks <laughs> mighty close to tits. <laughs> and I thoroughly approve. <laughs> it really makes me smile. Um, I want to get your thoughts. What did you think of the glorious? This was probably the most magnificent thing I've seen this off season so far. And it uh -huh. was this, this beautiful pass that I saw uh -huh. in training camp from Daniel Jones to what looked like a middle linebacker and no one else around. Can you talk to me a little bit about this? 
funny story about that. I have a Discord, and one of the kids in my Discord was at FanFest, and he's the one that filmed that. And then oh. it blew up. <laughs> it blew up. It blew up on Bleacher Report. It was all, you know, it got, it got like over millions of views on TikTok. So it's just funny. A guy that was in my Discord was the one that filmed that video that you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what the hell Daniel Jones was thinking. The, the, he, I'm trying to like think as, as to why that happened, and maybe it was just like the worst throw of all time. The only thing that, that I'm, I'm hoping that this was the case. If you watch the playback, Will Hernandez completely whiffs on the block, right? I don't know if you saw that because mm-hmm. everybody's just looking at the throw. He completely yeah, yeah. whiffs on the block. And obviously in practice, you can't sack the quarterback. On sure. that play, Daniel Jones would have got wrecked. So the yeah. only <laughs> rational – thinking I have there is maybe Daniel Jones was just like the play's dead. I'm just going to throw the ball because outside yeah. of that, I don't know what the <laughs> hell he was doing on that throw because, and, and some people said that the receiver ran the wrong route. I don't know. I guess that's my optimistic side. It's kind of like, well, Jones is like, I got sacked. Sure. I'm just going to throw the ball away. That's what I'm hoping. But yeah, yeah obviously yeah. a very embarrassing throw. The optics looked really bad. Oh yeah. No, it was, it, it got, and when I saw it, I was, they're like, oh, yeah, Daniel Jones with a great throw. And I'm like, so I click on it. I'm like, oh, let's see what it is. And I was like, <laughs> I was like come on. I was yeah. like, oh, God. Hi, it's all, well, we've all been there, though. Like, it's it's preseason. Well, you got nothing's the butt going on. I got the butt fumble. I, they had to retire <laughs> the butt fumble from the freaking ESPN top 10 worst plays because it was the nonstop winner for, like, over a year or, like, two years or whatever it was. I was like, I'm done with this. I've I've, I've gotten to the point where I need to wear it as a badge of honor. It actually has appeared in my videos multiple times as like, if I'm ranking things, one fighter jet, two fighter jets, three fighter jets, or no fighter jets, the no fighter jets is a butt fumble. <laughs> like that's, <laughs> it's, that's the, that is the scale I run on throughout the season. Oh, it's absolutely horrible. Guys, I am here with Chris, the entertainer talking sports. We are going to be giving away a shirt at the end of the stream. So we got about 10 or 15 minutes left in this stream. And... Chris is going to be picking someone to win a shirt. And all you have to do is subscribe to Chris. His link is in the top link in the description. It's also pinned in the live chat. So if you go over to live chat, click on that. Subscribe to Chris and then leave a comment saying Jets Talk 24-7 sent you over there on his most recent video. And Chris is going to pick one of those comments to win a shirt at the end of the stream. So. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Looking forward yeah. to it. Yeah. See, you can Looking get a you get yourself a Wall Street Wilson shirt. Get yourself a uh, hunting season or a New England asterisks or a you know a Miami sushi shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I got well, a bunch of them. You, let me ask you because you're talking about the teams in your division. Sure. What do you think about not just this year, but like the the way it's lining up for the future? Mm-hmm. What do you think about? I'm, I'll tell you real quick what I think about your division in the future. Sure. Bills are going to be good. Because they got the quarterback. Yep. They got the young quarterback. They got Josh Allen. I like their head coach. New England is interesting to me because mm-hmm. New England this year, I could actually see being pretty good because they got very aggressive. Mm-hmm. They spent a lot in free agency. They got some of their defensive players back that I think sat out due to COVID, if I'm not mistaken, last year. Yep. Um, and we'll see. And they drafted Mac Jones. But long term, if I'm a Jet fan, I'm not too concerned with New England because Belichick's mm-hmm. on the, the back nine of his career. I am not the biggest Mac Jones fan. We'll see. Maybe he'll turn out to be a pretty good quarterback. I'm not too concerned with them long-term. The Dolphins, I love their coach. I think Brian Flores is a really good coach. I think he's gotten a lot out of that football team. But I'm not too concerned with them either because I'm not a big believer in Tua Tango Vailoa. So if I was a Jets fan, obviously I'm concerned with the Bills. But if Wilson works out, I think you and the Bills could be at the top of that division before you know it over the next five, six, seven years if Wilson works out. That's exactly how I'm feeling. I'm not overly concerned about Mac Jones right now. I am happy that Belichick is on the back nine of his career. I want him out of the division as soon as possible. Um, it made me feel really good that Tampa won the Super Bowl because it makes me feel like Brady was the the the, the keys in the ignition of that of that whole car, uh, not Belichick. With the Dolphins, you kind of hit the nail on the head for me, and I'm I'm in I'm two parts to this. And it's really scary. And it's partially because of something I brought up earlier in this stream. I would have traded for Deshaun Watson if everything, uh, you know, did not go sideways with him prior to the draft. I would have made that trade. I would have given up the three first round picks. Now, I do think Miami has the ammo to get Deshaun Watson after this season. So I don't want Tua to look 
bad because I think that's the most likely landing spot for him. Um, I would say that. <sighs> okay, I I I, I'm I don't I don't speak. trust Tua, but I, I don't trust Tua. I, go for it. Because you, you brought up the Belichick the Belichick thing, Frankie from Flatbush. To me, that's because I when I see something, I I, I don't want to forget to talk about it. That stat is misleading. Okay, his record, the the He's majority of his losses is Cleveland. He had one good season mm-hmm. with Cleveland, and outside of that, it was the Cleveland freaking Browns. Since he's been mm-hmm. with New England, Belichick, let's not forget, and last year, they weren't good. And obviously, Brady leaving hurt them. But mm-hmm. their whole team sat out due to COVID. Cam Newton Cam Newton was bad at the quarterback spot. You look at the Brady years, he was 11-5 and five with Matt Castle as his quarterback. And who was the other guy? Um, The guy that's on the Colts now. Um, Brissette. That's his name. Yeah, Brissett. He had like a four and one record. Garoppolo had like a three or four and one record. So let's not yeah. act like Belichick doesn't have a lot to do with those Super Bowls that the Patriots won. Obviously, sure. Brady does as well. But let's not act like Belichick doesn't have a lot to do with it. Not to mention that Cleveland team that left Cleveland to go to Baltimore. That team won a Super Bowl in two thousand. So I don't know how many, you know, you know where Good all the point. fingerprints of, of Belichick was on that team. But there was. Don't tell me there wasn't some type of influence down there. It's a little, good point. a little scary. I never thought right? about that. The 2000. Right. Yeah, it's a good point about that. Oh, I freaking hate the Patriots. I I am like so jaded because Tom Brady. For me, the quarterback should count should have a separate salary cap because Brady taking half what he should have has allowed so much more to happen in New England, and it's a luxury that no other team is ever going to be able to take advantage of unless you have a supermodel wife that's making a hundred million dollars a year, like <laughs> or or get this, he's. He owns the TB12 clinic, which is the health facility for the New England Patriots. But the money from him, <laughs> from the TB12 clinic, doesn't count against the salary cap. Like, if if Daniel Jones goes off, he should open a $200 billion hot dog stand in MetLife Stadium. <laughs> and, like, just take the bare minimum contract. <sighs> money being paid under the table is not, not happening. The thing with Jones, he wouldn't generate as much money as Tom Brady, though. He just, no, he, just, no, he, he just wouldn't. He just wouldn't. Brady, no. Tom, Tom Brady, man. I, and I, 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 by the way, <laughs> yeah, he is beautiful. But I, I can't stand Tom Brady. I'll be the first to say it. I, I am not it. a Tom Brady. I am not, and I'm not even Jack. I am not a Tom Brady fan. But I, I fought it for so long, man. I used to say, I don't know if he's the goat. He's the goat. I fought he's it for so be long. The goat. I, he's the goat. Dude, I, I like, I, I, I was for the longest time. I wanted to just say, like, oh, it's Montana. You know, I wanted to believe Aaron Rodgers was gonna be that. Like, it's you, you can't like fight the dude. The dude's been in what like nine Super Bowls. Like, get out of here. Yeah, and he, <laughs> it's he, incredible. He won, it two, he won it with two different teams. Now, he's the goat. it's he's the goat. You can't can't say anything. And I'm I'm happy for him now. And I actually like him now because of his personality that you're getting to see away from Bill Belichick. Yeah, I had no idea Brady had a personality <laughs> in New England. Like he probably didn't have one in New England. But, like, he actually – he looks like he's having fun, and I think Brady having fun is going to hurt the Patriots recruiting guys, and they're going to have to pay almost a tax to get players, if you will. What do you think about that? Hmm. Interesting, right? I, I could see that. I could see that. See, because that's the kind of what Giants fans are worried about with um, mm-hmm. Judge. You know, is he too strict? Is it going to – are the players going to continue to buy in? When you're winning – because Belichick, obviously, you know, that's where a judge learned from. So not that he does the laps or whatever, but he probably has a similar type of mindset to that of Belichick. And when you're winning Super Bowls, players don't care. They'll do whatever it takes to win. But when you lose Tom Brady, it's not as easy to keep up that culture. So that's a good point you bring up. Now that, now that uh, players may be seeing Tom Brady's having a blast and he's actually getting to show himself, that's a good point. Even though the Patriots did spend a lot of money this offseason, they were able to sign some players. Yeah, they had the two tight ends. They got Johnny Smith and Hunter Henry up there now. I'm, yeah. like, really hoping one of them, like, offs a guy and goes to prison again and <laughs> we don't have to deal with Gronk and Hernandez again. Like, no, no, I'm, I'm done with that. I don't want that. He almost signed, uh, I think it was Hunter Henry. The Giants almost signed Hunter Henry. And I like I him a lot. I was surprised by that. And then they ended up with uh, Rudolph instead. Mm-hmm. I think that was a good move. You guys had a pretty interesting offseason. I like the Galladay signing. I think his like injuries in Detroit were more him not wanting to play for Detroit than it was really like injured. I don't know if, if you feel that way. I know you've probably done way more research into this than, than no, I No, I agree with you. I, I think, I mean, I think he was definitely hurt, 
But I agree. Had he been happy there, he would have came mm-hmm. back and played. He, he definitely yeah. he definitely could have still played from everything I've read about this situation. Yes. And that's why I think – you probably don't know this. The Giants mm-hmm. basically had him in for sleepaway camp. He was at the Giants facility for three days because they – I think they – they asked him about that. I, I, I think yeah, yeah. that, and I think that's why they did as much research on him that they did because I agree with you. I think he sat out uh, because he wasn't happy in Detroit. Do you see any potential issue with that? Like, like a personality type of trait? Like, do you see a? I, I can't even say Odell because Odell was like a gamer on the field. I don't think he would like hold. He was just like a that. distraction like, off of it. Exactly. Do you, do yeah. you see any and on issues it at with times, the, but. Do you see yeah. any issue with Galladay's uh, personality at all? I don't know him well enough, to be honest with you, uh, That's quite fair. yet. I don't, I don't well uh, know him well enough. Here's what I'll say: I remember, because a, a wide receiver that a lot of people compare Galladay to, and it makes sense, is uh, Plaxico Burris. Both tall Ooh. wide receivers, both guys that the Giants brought in early in their quarterbacks' mm-hmm. careers, um, and people said the same things about Plaxico Burris when the Giants brought him in. They worried mm-hmm. about his, his, his uh, you know, his personality with the Steelers. Sure. Is it going to work out with Eli Manning and the Giants? And obviously, it worked out until he shot himself. Galladay, the same thing. So I, I'm going to give him a chance with the Giants. Clean slate. We'll see how he sure. works out with the culture and everything else. But yeah, I mean, I guess you got to be slightly concerned when you hear about that. Basically, he, it, I mean, it was a contract year. Maybe he doesn't want to further risk injury. But at the same time, you're like, no, you want guys that want to go out there, put their best foot forward. So I'd say it's a slight mm-hmm. concern. But at the end of the day clean slate if he does that with the giants then i'll start to have questions how are you guys feeling about your uh your thomas pick from last year and the coming back of nate solder i i think thomas is gonna be really good this year and and Mm -hmm. i i know it's inevitable that a lot of jet fans are going to compare him to makai becton and a lot of bucks fans Mm -hmm. are going to compare him to tristan Wirfs and um, jedrick wills but i think thomas and, and when you just look at pff you look at the sacks he gave up, people are going to look at it, they're going to be like, oh, he was he was horrible. If you watch the games, first off, look at the players he went up against all year. He faced Chase Young twice. Uh, he, he went up He went up, He went went up. up against, I think it was Bosa, maybe he was hurt, I can't remember in the 49, he probably was hurt. But he went up against some of the best edge rushers in football week in and week out. The Giants made a change midseason where they got rid of Colombo, the offensive line coach, because they thought he was doing a really bad job, and he was screwing mm-hmm. up the technique for Andrew Thomas and a lot of the guys on the line. Joe Judge stepped in. Andrew Thomas looked like a different offensive lineman the second half of the year. He showed a lot of progression. Um, and we found out after the fact that he was playing with a hurt foot all year. So mm. now Andrew Thomas back in year two. I think he's going to be really good. I'm not going to say he's going to be old pro. We'll see. I'm not going to put those kind of expectations. Here's what I'm going to say. When I'm calling the games this year, I don't expect to say Andrew Thomas' name a lot. And that, you don't want to when it's an offensive lineman. Thing. I think if there is one offensive lineman, I'm – very comfortable with this year it's him i think he's gonna be i think he's gonna be fine for this football team i really like that pick that was the guy i was hoping would fall to the jets because he felt like the safest of the players uh in that draft so i was like okay giants got a you know a rock steady eddie right there like you don't have to worry about him and then makai beckton i was like ooh, i was like this guy's big but like he could bust so hard (laughs) Like he's got to stay healthy. That's he's like six foot seven, three hundred seventy pounds. I think that's pounds. that's your worry if you're a Jet fan is the health. With yeah, mm-hmm. the talent's there. It's the health. Oh, Oh, hundred percent. And he faced some wild edge rushers last year, and he just threw them around. I am so excited to watch Mackay Becton this year. And actually, the uh, I don't know. Did you do you know much about Morgan Moses since he came from Washington? I mean, he seems like a great right tackle for the Jets to bring in, especially if they're going to focus more on the running game this year. Uh, he graded out real highly in the running game for Washington. Yeah, I, I actually have a, I talked to a couple of Washington fans a lot actually in my Discord, and they they said they loved that pickup for the uh, for the Jets. They said he, I I don't mm-hmm. know much about him, but Washington fans actually speak pretty highly about him. Yeah, I'm I'm stoked on this Jets offensive line. I think that McGovern, our center that we got from Denver last year, I think he had some issues because of the weak guard play on either side. We now plug in Elijah Vera Tucker at left guard. This guy, he played left tackle at USC. So, like, with the health concerns of Makai Becton, you now have a backup left tackle in Elijah Vera Tucker that you can kick out that way in the event Becton goes down. Then you got George Fant, who started for you at right tackle. You bring in Morgan Moses, who's more than likely going to start at right tackle with the money you're paying him, and you have a swing tackle in Fant. You have so much depth at the tackle positions 
where if Becton does go down, misses a few snaps, misses a game or two, you can kind of piecemeal it together without worrying about your new shiny franchise quarterback behind you. And to circle back to what you said about Solder, I feel the same way about him. A lot of Giants fans mm-hmm. don't like Solder because of the contract, and he definitely didn't live up to that. He took a huge discount to come back and play with the New York Giants. He could have easily retired. You're talking about a guy that's really rich. So I definitely commend him for that. He helped the team out with the budget and everything else. I think he's more valuable than people think. Um, first off, he's a leader. The guy's a former captain. And you're talking about two very young tackles, both second-year players, Matt Barrett on the right side, Thomas on the left. I think he could. He adds a lot uh, to, to that offensive line group um, in terms of being able to teach them. And I'm not so worried about the tackle position. Like Matt Barrett, I'm not going to lie to you. I definitely have used a lot of question marks. He's a guy with a ton of potential. He had the longest arms of anybody in the draft in 2020. Everybody speaks highly about him. They said he has upside of a first-round tackle prospect, but it's a major question mark. And I think it's valuable to have a guy like Nate Solder, who I'm pretty confident could at least step in in the right side and provide at least satisfactory tackle play. It's the interior part of the line where I'm really nervous. Like Shane Lemieux last year was dreadful in pass protection. I'm really nervous about that. The tackle spot I'm not too nervous about because I do think Solder could at least be okay. Not great, but he's not gonna he's not gonna embarrass us on the right side. All right, if so before we go to out. our, if we go, <laughs> before I go to our T-shirt giveaway, uh, what would you say is going to be, who's going to be the victor tomorrow? Is it going to be the Jets? Ooh. Is it going to be the Giants? You know what? Whichever team gets out of their healthiest is the victor, in my opinion. But in terms of who's mm. going to win the game, <laughs> who in terms of who's going to win the game, I'm going to go with the Jets. To be honest with you, I'm going to go with this because the Giants aren't playing their starters. Mm. So I was going to say you're missing Jones and Barkley and Galladay and like the yeah. whole the whole crew. So yeah, I, I, don't, I honestly don't care who hand. wins. I know there's some Jet fans and Giant fans yeah, in here that sure. may care. I just want the team to get out healthy. I want them to grow as a unit. I want mm-hmm. to see the offensive line play pretty well. I'd like to see Tony used a bit. Um, but yeah, if I had to pick just for the simple reason we're not playing our starters, and it seems like the Jets are going to play theirs at least more so than the Giants. Mm-hmm. I would expect the Jets to win. Chris, I'm going to have you go over to your most recent video and start looking through the comments. We're going to give away a shirt. Guys, if you have not sub- subscribed to Chris, the entertainer talking sports, his link is in the top of my description as well as in the pinned comment in the chat. Make sure you head over there and leave a comment on his most recent video saying Jets Talk 24-7 sent you there. But Holy crap. You may not be. You may not be one of the guys over there if you haven't done it already. You've got a <laughs> lot. Uh, you got at least... I'll give them another minute or two, but you got at Ooh, least uh, okay. 10 or 12 right. people that already come. I'm going to give you guys another minute for anybody that does want to go over there and comment just in case. But right now we've got about eight or nine guys and I'll, I'll pick a random right. number and I'll, and I'll pick one. I'll give you guys another minute. I'll refresh it and see if anybody else comments, but I appreciate all the comments guys. Thank you guys for coming over. Thank you guys for not being too mean to me. I know there's probably some comments in the chat that hate New York Giants fans, but I appreciate you guys for showing me some respect, even though I root for a team that a lot of you guys hate. Um, but I'll give you guys another 30 seconds. I'll refresh it, and then uh, I'll pick a random name. I would say we probably have a lot of people in this chat that are similar to you and I, where we don't necessarily hate the team that we share a building with. It's it's You guys probably feel, I don't want to say feel bad for us, but you, you, you can't be upset because we haven't done anything to like dethrone you as the team in New York, and we just kind of have to sit there been and take it. We have good recently either. We've been bad no. too recently. I really wanted you guys to regret passing on Sam Darnold that draft. And of course, <laughs> with you did. Sam just friggin' bottoming out here, I was like, oh great, you know, I was wrong on that, I'm wrong on this, and I don't know. I, I want Barkley to do well. I actually, I think Barkley's future hinges on what happens with daniel jones i think if you guys go with a rookie quarterback you sign saquon barkley if you roll with daniel jones i think you kind of let barkley play out his rookie contract and then franchise him once or twice um and maybe not tie up all the money in him here's what i'm gonna say and then i'm gonna refresh this and we're gonna pick a winner i think it's more likely and i i want jones to work out i want jones to be the guy if you ask me right now if Barkley stays completely healthy this year, if he does, I think he's going to have a big year. Because you got Galladay, you got the threat of Jones in the back. Like, it's set up for Barkley to have a big year. I, I think he will if he stays healthy and he's in rookie form. If I'm the Giants and he does that, I think they're going to give him the extension. They drafted him second overall, okay? he They want him. 
to, to they want to give him a second contract. They put a lot of faith in him. So, and I think that's in the Giants' best interest rather than giving the contract to Jones. That's my honest opinion because I and and we'll see. I, and I'll let Jones play out the rookie contract if the team wins nine or ten games this year and hope he continues to build and grow and get better. But I look at Barkley. If I give him a four-year deal, and Jones doesn't work out, I'm now bringing in a rookie quarterback, which still a very young. Mm-hmm. great playmaker in Barkley to help him out similar to like Todd Gurley did for Jared Goff, so on and so forth. So that would be my approach this year. If Barkley's great, I'm going to give him that four year extension and I'm not jumping the gun yet on Daniel Jones. That that's, that's my take on those two players. Um, so I think you kind of said that. So I'm going to agree with you on that, but let's refresh this and let's pick a winner real quick. Let's all see. Right, all right. Let's see. All right. I got. need you actually, let me, let me count right. how many comments I got. See, that's why I gave him a little more time. We got like at least four or five more comments. So I want everybody to get an See? opportunity here. Um, there you go. I need you to pick a number. Let me count how many um, names there were. One, two, three. I'm not going to count doubles, guys. One, two, <laughs> three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. 18, 19, 20. Uh, make sure there's not another one. 21, 22. Okay, 22. Ooh. Pick a number between 1 and 22. Ooh, all right, chat. I'm going to let you guys do this. Pick a number between 1 and 22, and then I'm going to add a number that I have hidden. Uh, what if they pick 22? Next to my screen. Uh, then it's going to go backwards. Okay, okay. <laughs> if, it's, it's, if, if you bust, you go back to 17, and then we'll go up. That's what we'll do. Okay. Uh, oh, man, lots of numbers in there. <laughs> Lame Cactus must have been the second one because he wants to. Uh, oh, damn, see, I didn't do this right. Now I got too many numbers going around. Oh, we're going 14, 14 plus 2. 16 is the number. All right, 16. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 10, 11, 12, 13. J, uh, Jad, J-A-D. He's got like a possum for a uh, profile picture. <laughs> he said he came here from Jets Talk 24-7 with an exclamation point. So Jad is the uh, is the winner of the t-shirt. I love it. Jad, reach out to me on Instagram or Facebook or something like that. Let me get your information. I'll send you a shirt. You get to pick either a Zach Wilson shirt, one of the division rival lines, something like that. Uh, Jad, good stuff. Look at him go. <laughs> I see Chad in there. There you go. Well, yeah, that's definitely a possum. Yeah, they're disgusting animals. They're disgusting. They are animals. ugly. <laughs> they are not not attractive looking animals. Not in the slightest. All right, let's do this. Let me get my exit music queued up and bam. All right, woo, Chris. Thank you so much for joining the uh, the panel tonight. I look forward to having you on again in the future for sure. Make sure you tell everyone where you're from, what you're about, where they can find you, and uh, thank you. Yeah, I mean, listen, man, I, I appreciate you having me on. I uh, definitely want to get you on the channel. Like, I, we'll talk more after the stream, but definitely want to make an effort to do something more regularly with you this year. I think you got a great community. I think you got a great channel. You put a lot of effort into it. Um, so I'm looking forward to working with you more in the, in the uh, future. In terms of what I do, obviously, you guys know I root for this team. Uh, I'm a big New York Giant fan. That's a lot of my content. I'm a Knicks fan. I do the play-by-play for every single Knicks game during the regular season. So maybe some of you guys share that basketball team. I, I always say it. I don't care if you're a Nets fan. I don't care if I offend you. There's only one team in New York. That's the New York Knicks. I still call, call the Brooklyn Nets the New Jersey Nets. But you come over there, watch the Knicks content if you want. And I'm a huge Mets fan. So I know a lot of Jets fans are Mets fans. Occasionally, I'll do a Mets game. Not looking good for us right now. Jacob DeGrom uh, got pushed back another two weeks, so we'll see. But uh, I, I appreciate you having me on, man. Anytime I get an opportunity to talk football, I'm all about it. Um, and I like it. I like the little get a different flair where I'm not just talking New York Giants. So thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. I love it. Chris, thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much for flying with us tonight. My name's Ryan. I've been your pilot. I'll see you next time. J-E-T-A! <laughs>